Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In the studio right here in front of me, I have the Polaris 15 laptop from Tuxedo Computers. And this is somewhat of a special occasion because this is the first time that I have ever reviewed a product from Tuxedo Computers. So I'm really excited to get into this review. This Polaris 15 laptop is catering more to the gamer crowd. It has an integrated GPU, a really awesome processor, and it's actually a really awesome laptop overall, and we're going to review it right now. Tuxedo Computers offers a wide selection of hardware in several categories such as mobility laptops, mini PCs, as well as gaming and business specific laptop models. Until this review, I've never used a computer from Tuxedo Computers before, so I'm definitely interested in checking out their catalog. The model that they've sent me in particular is the Polaris 15, and like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the target audience for this laptop is the gamer crowd. It features a choice between Intel or AMD CPUs, and you can configure yours with up to 64 gigabytes of 3200 MHz RAM, an RTX 2060 GPU, and when it comes to storage, you can go up to a two terabyte NVMe SSD. So you definitely have a lot of options for how to configure yours. Overall, I think the build quality is quite nice. Everything feels firm and well put together, and the chassis is made of mostly black aluminum, although the bottom of the laptop is actually made of what appears to be hard plastic. That aside, it still feels like a very sturdy and well-designed laptop throughout, so I don't have any complaints whatsoever when it comes to the build quality. According to the spec sheet, the display boasts 300 nits of brightness. Now, I don't have any way of actually measuring that right now, but... What I can tell you is the display looks plenty bright. In fact, I don't even want it to be brighter than it is. I feel like being any brighter than this is completely unnecessary. This is probably the brightest of all of the laptops in the studio right now. And it might even be my favorite display of all the laptops that I have. It's definitely an awesome display. Now on the site, there's several options for the display when you go to configure yours but all of the options seem to max out at 1080p. And for some people, that might be a downside. It's not a downside to me because I'm not really sold on 4K displays anyway when it comes to laptops. And I think that the 1080p display that it has is plenty fine, at least for my taste. But just keep that in mind if you want a 4K display, maybe you might want to contact them and see if that's something that they can do. I don't know, but I don't see the option on the website. Also, the bezel is quite slim around the top and the sides of the display, but it's a bit thicker on the bottom. The webcam is actually underneath the screen, and I don't really care for that. I understand the need for slimmer bezels and all that, but I don't really want people to be looking up my nose while I'm conducting a Zoom call with someone, so I really don't like webcams to be underneath the screen. Now, on my end, I'm more inclined to use an external USB webcam anyway, so... I don't really think that the webcam being at the bottom is really going to affect me too much, but that could be an issue if you don't want to lug around a webcam in your bag everywhere you go. When it comes to the keyboard, I really like the tactile feel of the keys. It's very pleasant to type on. When it comes to key travel, I think it has the perfect amount of key travel, especially when you consider that this laptop is a little on the thin side when it comes to 15-inch laptops. So I feel like it has the perfect balance of key travel while also allowing the chassis to be on the thinner side so you don't feel like you are lugging around a desktop replacement. But on my end though, the keyboard was a little challenging to type on because the keyboard that was on the review unit was not the standard US layout that I'm accustomed to. So there's not actually a problem in that regard because I didn't clarify what keyboard type I actually wanted. But without being used to a non-US layout keyboard, it actually was very challenging for me to type on this keyboard. But again, I should have clarified which type of keyboard I wanted. And when you do order this laptop, if you were to order one for yourself, there's all kinds of different options on the keyboard section of their build page where you could choose the keyboard layout that's perfect for you. Just make sure you do that if you were to order one of these laptops. 
and maybe next time if I review another one of their machines, I'll specifically request the appropriate keyboard. But if I take that out of the equation, the keyboard feels nice, the tactile feel is great, the key travel is perfect like I mentioned, and I think it's actually a very good keyboard. When it comes to the trackpad, it doesn't have physical buttons, which I personally prefer, but to be honest, maybe I'm just old-fashioned. The size is adequate and the responsiveness of tracking and clicking is nice. Even though there's no physical buttons on this trackpad, you can actually press on the bottom left or the bottom right corners of the trackpad and then you'll feel and hear a click. So you do get that tactile feel even though there aren't any separate buttons. For the most part, I think the trackpad is fine. It works very well. My only complaint, and this is a relatively minor one at least for me, is that the trackpad is not in the center of the keyboard. And I get it, it's probably because we have a 10 key on the right hand side, so that makes it off center a bit. Now to be fair, while using this laptop, I've never had any unintended clicks or mouse movements, so the trackpad not being in the center of the palm rest is not actually a functional issue for me, it's just a personal preference. I also would like to see a 15 inch laptop with no 10 key, you know, the numpad on the right hand side, which would make it even easier for the trackpad to be centered. But again, that's just personal preference. Not everybody cares about that. That's not actually a problem. I just want to mention that because I know a few of you at least that have been watching my reviews have also pointed out in other reviews that it does sometimes bother you if the trackpad is not in the center. And while I do concur with you, Functionally, it's been perfectly fine. When it comes to ports, the left side of the laptop features a hardware Ethernet port, USB, a microphone jack, and an audio jack. And I really like the fact that there is a hardware Ethernet jack on this laptop because, you know, I configure switches and routers every now and then, and not having to reach for a dongle to attach an Ethernet cable to the computer, that's pretty cool. On the right hand side, we have two more USB ports and an SD card reader, so, you know, that's pretty standard. On the back of the unit, there's not one, but two mini display ports as well as HDMI. So if you want to use some external displays with this laptop, you will have no trouble doing that. It has more than its fair share of ports when it comes to displays. Also on the back of the machine is a USB-C port as well as a barrel connector for the power adapter. When it comes to the software side of things, the default distribution is Tuxedo OS, which is based on Ubuntu but with Budgie as the desktop environment instead of GNOME. And I have to say, I really liked checking out Budgie again. It's been quite a long time since I've had a chance to check out the Budgie desktop, so it felt pretty good to get another opportunity to play around with it. Even though GNOME is my preferred desktop environment, and that hasn't changed even after using this, I have to say that the implementation of the Budgie desktop on this laptop is really good. It works very well, it's fast and responsive, and I can't complain about a thing. So if you are a fan of the Budgie desktop, then I think you're going to like this quite a bit. And it probably goes without saying at this point, but just like all the other distributions out there, you have all of the staples when it comes to included software, such as a web browser, in this case Firefox, LibreOffice, a terminal app, file manager, basically all of the things that you would expect to find in a typical Linux distribution, you will find all of those things on this distro. I noticed that there's actually a button beside the power button, and at first I didn't know what that was for, but when I pressed it, up came the Tuxedo Control Center, and I was actually blown away. This is a very good piece of software. When you bring up this app, it's going to show you your current temperatures, your CPU frequency, and even information about the GPU. And it even allows you to change the power profile to a different one, and even come up with your own profiles as well, which allows you to squeeze as much out of the battery as you can. And I really appreciate that they put this control in the hands of the user, and I think that this sets a very good example for other manufacturers to do as well. I don't think anybody is going to be offended by having more control, and having more control over your hardware makes the experience that much better. And even if you don't care about having all of this control, this app at the very least gives you full visibility 
into the status and the health of the hardware on the unit, which I think is really awesome. So gaming is a very important factor of this laptop because it's part of the marketing. It includes a GPU, and I have to say, the performance is very good. Now, I'm not the best when it comes to Doom, but it is my tried and true or my go-to when it comes to trying out games on a gaming laptop. When I record gameplay footage, I do so from an external display, and I tried both 1080p and 4K to see how the performance would be on both. When the display was actually set to a 4K resolution, it kept up with Doom just fine. Most of the time, the frame rate was around 60 frames per second. It did dip every now and then. But in my experience, it actually was closer, if not equal to 60 frames per second most of the time. And even when the frame rate dipped down a bit, it was never at the point where it was unplayable. It was very smooth. And then I also tried lowering the resolution of the game down to 1080p, which is the native resolution of this laptop anyway. And it pretty much stayed on 60 frames per second almost, if not exactly, 100% of the time. It was a very smooth experience. The display looks great for gaming. And I think if you want to play games on the go, this laptop will actually do just fine. Regardless of how good a laptop like this is when it comes to gaming, it isn't going to make me better at Doom because, well, I'm not that good at it. But, you know, it's a good test game and it ran very well and I came away impressed. When it comes to the fan, the fan was actually silent most of the time. It did kick on every now and then, and when it does, it's loud enough that you'll definitely hear it, but it's not overbearing. When playing games, the fan is much louder, but that's to be expected. It's not the quietest fan ever, but since it wasn't running most of the time, it never bothered me. And even if it was running most of the time, you do have control in the Tuxedo Control Center to actually customize that a bit, so I don't really feel like it's going to be a problem for anyone, because again, they do give you quite a bit of control over the hardware, and I think that's a great thing. But I kept everything at the defaults, and with the defaults, like I mentioned, the laptop was silent most of the time, so it never got to the point where it was a problem. Now when it comes to audio quality, most of the time when I review laptops, I come away disappointed when it comes to the audio quality of the built-in speakers. This new model of the Raspberry Pi kind of reminds me of those older computers. And I'm not going to say that the speakers on this laptop really blew me away or anything like that. But I do have to say that I feel like the audio quality is better on this laptop than the majority of the laptops that I've reviewed recently. I don't think that the speakers are going to win any awards, but you know what? The sound quality is actually fine. All in all, I really enjoyed my time with this laptop. I can't really find much to complain about. I don't really prefer the webcam to be at the bottom, but to be fair, you can't really have thin bezels along the top of the display and also have a webcam at the top of the display. We can't defy the laws of physics, but if that's the most I can complain about, I think this laptop is doing pretty darn good. It runs very fast. The performance is great. Gaming performance is great. The chassis is good. The audio quality is good. Overall, I think it's a very solid laptop and I do recommend it. So let me know what you think of this review or Tuxedo Computers in general in the comments down below. I look forward to reading those comments. And let me know if there's any hardware you would like me to review that I might be able to try to get my hands on. I always love checking out new hardware. It's one of my favorite perks of having a YouTube channel. I get to play with new toys, but then you guys benefit because I'll give you a review. So if you haven't already clicked that like button, please do so if you like this video because that lets YouTube know that you want to see more content just like this. And subscribe if you haven't already done so, because I have some awesome content coming very soon. So until next time, thanks for watching.